How do I know if my tarantula is going to molt? One of the most challenging parts of keeping a pet tarantula is caring for it before, during and after a molt. A pet tarantula is at its most fragile when it molts, and if there are going to be complications when keeping tarantulas it almost always occurs during a molt. So the next obvious question is how do you know if your tarantula is going to molt, and what should you do when you see the signs? Signs of a molting tarantula There are five different signs which may suggest that your tarantula is going to molt. Not all spiders will display all four of these symptoms, but the more you see, the more likely a molt is on the horizon. Fasting the first, and most guaranteed, sign that your pet tarantula is going to molt is that it goes off its food. Assuming that all the environmental conditions are correct, temperature and humidity, then a tarantula which goes off its food is almost certainly coming up for a molt. If you feed your spider a couple of times and find they have little or no interest in food then there is a very good chance that a molt is coming up. Darkening abdomen Many of the most popular pet tarantulas have, urticating hairs, on their abdomens. These are defensive hairs which are kicked off when your tarantula is frightened or angry. In reality many tarantulas which possess such hairs will kick some of them off, especially if they are regularly handled. This leads to a bald spot, which is typically quite light in color. Tarantula molting signs When a tarantula gets close to a molt this bald patch will turn from a light yellow, pink, orange to a dark and glossy black as the new skin starts to form underneath. A darkening abdomen is therefore an almost guaranteed way to spot a tarantula that will be molting in the next few weeks. Note, however, that not all species of tarantula actually have urticating hairs, so if your spider has no bald spot then this method cannot be relied upon. Swollen abdomen This is not the most scientific of methods but tarantulas molt when they need to grow. Their legs and carapace are both tough and solid, but the abdomen of a tarantula is like an expanding sac. The more they eat, the bigger this abdomen gets. Therefore when you see a tarantula, especially a growing, non-adult, specimen, that looks like it's going to burst it is likely that a molt may be on the horizon. Some growing specimens can look almost like their abdomen is going to pop it's so big and fat, and this can be the motivation that a tarantula needs to molt. If ever you have a juvenile tarantula that looks so big that it's going to pop, then a molt in likely imminent. Sluggish behavior tarantula molting photo It takes a lot of effort and energy for a tarantula to change its skin, and most specimens will quietly prepare for this major event some weeks in advance. By the time of the actual molt, a spare and pliable skin will have been constructed underneath the current skin. For this reason many tarantulas will become more sluggish before a molt. They'll be less inclined to climb about, and more likely to sit about in a corner somewhere, seldom moving and instead focusing their energy on constructing their new skin. If a typically active tarantula seems unwilling to move about all of a sudden then this may indicate that a molt is imminent. Note. This sluggish behavior should be coupled with one or more of the other signs described here. If your spider hasn't stopped eating, or the bald patch hasn't gone black, for example, then sluggishness could be a sign of more serious health issues. Extra webbing your tarantula is at its most vulnerable when going through a molt. With their soft skin and fangs, a recently molted tarantula is unable to defend itself in the wild. For this reason many tarantulas will sink deep into their lair and cover the entrance hole with web as a source of protection. If your spider is one that naturally produces a fair amount of webbing, such as the cobalt blue or green bottle blue, and you suddenly find that they have concealed themselves behind a piece of cork bark, with no entry or exit holes, this too can be a strong indicator that molting is on the horizon. What should I do when my tarantula is molting? So you've seen one or more of the above signs and are feeling confident that your pet tarantula is coming up to molt. We've also discussed how it's critical to get this molting process right for your pet. So what should you, as the owner, do to help prepare your pet for a perfect molt? Withhold food tarantula molting photo first and foremost it is important to appreciate that tarantulas won't, or can't, eat for a week or two before and after a molt. Indeed, insects such as crickets running around the tank can cause injury and annoyance to a tarantula that is trying to molt. If the signs suggest that your spider is going to change its skin, therefore, it makes sense to withhold food for a period of time to prevent this potential source of damage. 
ensure suitable hides are present as stated previously, tarantulas like to molt in privacy where they feel safe. As a result you should ensure that your pet has suitable hides where it can conceal itself when a molt seems imminent. Increase humidity One of the most critical aspects for a successful molt is suitable humidity. Tarantulas that try to change their skin in an overly dry environment frequently struggle, sometimes to their own detriment. When your tarantula is coming up to molt it can therefore be a good idea to increase the humidity. Spraying the tank with tepid water, or gently misting the substrate, can both be excellent ways to increasing the humidity in your tarantula cage. Provide privacy Lastly, it is important to give your pet the privacy they desire. For example if they have webbed themselves into their lair then don't be tempted to peel back the web to check on your spider. Avoid handling them, and give them the peace and quiet they need during this critical period. How do I know if my tarantula has molted? If the signs are well, and you have suitably prepared your tarantula, then some weeks later you should find that your tarantula has successfully molted. For the first time tarantula keeper of course it can be a worrying first experience, so how do you know for certain that your spider has successfully molted? Sloughed skin tarantula skin photo The most obvious sign that your tarantula has molted is the presence of their old skin. It is not unheard of for keepers to initially think they have two tarantulas in the cage until they realize one of them is simply the sloughed skin. Even through thick webbing it is often possible to see this discarded skin. Spotting an old skin is easiest in those species, such as Brachypelma smithy or Gramostola rosea, who often molt in the open. For more secretive spiders, however, you may not always see the old skin immediately as it could be down a hole or tucked behind some cork bark. Be aware, therefore, that just because you haven't seen a skin, yet, doesn't necessarily mean that your spider hasn't yet molted. Odd stretching Once a spider molts they will normally spend a few days making sure that their new skin has hardened correctly. They do this by stretching the limbs and pushing fluids through them, in order to expand them to their full dimensions. Another sign, therefore, that your tarantula has successfully molted can be seeing them sitting in odd positions. Often legs will be stretched out directly in front and behind your spider, rather than sitting casually by their sides. If you look at your spider and find they look like they're doing, tarantula yoga, this can be a further indication that a molt has been successfully completed. Brighter colors tarantula orange photo Possibly the most obvious visual cue that your spider has molted is that they look amazing. That bald patch will be gone, your tarantula's hair will look silky smooth and all their colors will seem brighter and more vibrant. The first species of tarantula which I personally bred was Brachypelma vagans, a species which remains close to my heart even today. Every time one of my specimens molts I am truly blown away by their glossy black legs and bright scarlet abdomen, truly a sight to behold. Color changes Many juvenile tarantulas look completely different to adult specimens. As the juvenile molts it will slowly take on the colors of the adults, getting ever closer to the final appearance as they molt. Therefore if you peer into your spider cage one day to find that your pet has changed its colors, this too is a strong signal that a molt has occurred. Greater activity Finally, a spider that has molted and hardened off its skin successfully will find itself tremendously hungry after some weeks of fasting. This can result in a noticeably more active tarantula. If your spider has been holed up for weeks, unseen to you, and then one evening you find them bounding around the cage it is generally safe to assume that a molt has occurred, especially if this activity is paired with one or more of the other signs described. What happens after a molt? Tarantula orange photo so by now you're feeling pretty proud of yourself. You spotted that a molt was imminent, you prepared your spider suitably and now here they are, bigger, brighter, more active and more colorful than ever before. Great job. So what happens next? Feeding firstly, I like to give my spiders about a week to recover before I start to offer food again. Pop in just one or two of your chosen feeder insects and watch for a response. Your spider should be hungry by this point so should pounce immediately on the food. If so, you're all set. Just start feeding again as you always have done. On the opposite end of the scale your spider may show little or no interest. Alternatively it may even run away from the food. If this is the case, remove the prey and try again some days later. 
Cleaning when you're confident that your tarantula has returned to normal, it is smart to remove the old skin from the cage. Leaving it in there not only looks unsightly, but can also attract parasites or mold which feeds on the dead skin. If necessary, especially for arboreal or aggressive species, use a long pair of metal forceps to gently remove the skin from the cage. Sexing if you are keeping juvenile tarantulas then molting can be an ideal time to consider sexing your spider. Firstly, try to familiarize yourself with what an adult male tarantula looks like. This is important as adult males have a very short lifespan, so if you want to try and mate your spider it's critical to be able to identify a male as soon as he has matured. Secondly, the molted skin which you removed can also be a useful tool for sexing your spider. Whether you learn to do this yourself, or rely on the services of an expert, if you're rearing young tarantulas then a careful inspection of the molted skin will help you decide whether you have a male or female, and so potentially prepare for breeding campaigns in the future. Record keeping Lastly it can be interesting and beneficial to keep a record of molts. Adult tarantulas, for example, typically only molt once a year and do so at roughly the same time. Therefore keeping a note of when your spider last molted can help you in predicting when the next molt will likely arise. For growing juveniles which molt far more regularly it can still be worthwhile keeping a record, as over time you'll start to see patterns develop which will help you predict forthcoming molts. You'll also be doing your own little bit of biological research which has value in itself for the hobby. FAQs How often do tarantulas molt? Adult tarantulas typically molt once per annum, at roughly the same time each year. It is important to note, however, that most adult male tarantulas won't molt again once they reach maturity. While adult females may live for decades, the males typically only survive for 12 to 18 months after maturity hence the lack of supplementary molts. Spiderlings and juveniles molt far more frequently, though how often they molt is directly correlated with how much they eat, the more they eat, the sooner they will molt. In addition it is worth noting that some tarantula species grow much more rapidly than others, meaning they will molt more frequently. In general you can expect juvenile tarantulas to molt once every few months, with the period of time between molts getting longer as the spider nears maturity. How long does it take a tarantula to molt? While tarantulas often take some weeks preparing for a molt, the actual process of changing the skin is relatively brief, and is measured in hours. Note, however, that once a tarantula has removed itself from the old skin it will still take some days before the skin is properly hardened and the tarantula is able to begin feeding once again. When do tarantulas molt? Tarantulas are nocturnal, so it is most common for them to molt at night. It is not unusual to wake up early in the morning to find your tarantula part way through a molt, and some may even molt during daylight hours. The important point is to give your spider the privacy it needs during this difficult phase. So, if you wake up in the morning to find your spider part way through a molt try not to disturb them with loud noises or bright lights. Instead, leave them well alone and soon enough you'll find your tarantula sitting next to its recently sloughed skin.